Hi, Jez here from myjezza.co.uk and I'm here to show you how I made this um, lovely little um, storage for my paper shares. Um, so I've had um, some paper shares and I've made these little um, envelope holders for them and I've, I've labelled them and they all fit nicely in here so I can get them and I've put all the um, colours so when I'm using the different um, papers I know what colours they go with them without having to look in the catalogue or um, find the labels because often you, you throw them out and it matches um, my little ribbon one that I made just the other day and um, I've, I've put my labels on these now so I know what what they're called and what colour they are. Uh, so when I'm demoing, I know what they are. But it is useful to um, know what they are. It's quite easy to buy the wrong one if you haven't written it down. So they are going to look stunning together. Um, and so stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so to make the inserts, I'm going to use the envelope punch board. And I got the measurements from... Crafty Owl, she's got a, it's online, it's a, a box generator and you put in the dimensions of the box you want and it churns out where you're going to do the, 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 the punching and the scoring and what size of paper you want. And so because this is a paper share, I only want it to be a, a little bit uh, thick because I haven't got the whole pack. So I'm going to do this an eighth of an inch thick. Um, and so therefore I want a piece of paper that is uh, nine and a half by nine and a half. Okay, so I'm using... Um, white um, 12 by 12 and nine and a half by nine and a half you're going to do your first punch at four and five eighths I will put over on my blog all the measurements for um, different widths because um, if you had a full stack you'd probably want to go to three eighths of an inch and then we're going to move it to four and seven eighths and do a punch and a score and we're going to continue that all the way around so you've got two very small lines together okay should be an eighth of an inch and then we're just going to line this little bit up with that score line and then we're going to move it along and match it up there punching and scoring just like you would with anything that you were making on the envelope punch board which I love. I remember umming and ahhing about buying one of these. It's like, oh, it's a lot of money, and it's like, I've got, I can make envelopes else in other ways, but it does so much more. I saw a demonstration of it, and it was like, yeah, I'm having a bit of that. So, that completely failed. There we go. Right, so we are going to, on one of them, just fold on the second score line and score it. We're not going to do both because we're actually going to stick that down. And then on all the others, we're going to do it on both. And an eighth of an inch is not very much, so you might need to just Tease it a little bit. Press it into place. Teasy, teasy. There we go. Might do that one first, see if that makes a difference. And then the other one might be easier. No, not really. So I wanted to do this because I wanted the paper to be protected and I wanted um, it to be separated and I didn't just want a single divider in it, I wanted it to have more protection and um, 
so that it didn't get sort of dog-eared and also so I could keep the scraps in the same envelope um, so that they won't just be loose in a in a box okay now there's tiny teeny tiny little bits like that I'm just going to snip them because we don't want them so I'm just going to snip them away if you have deeper deeper dividers deeper pockets you will have a little bit more um, of a square but on this thin one yeah okay so one of them that's only scored once I am going to stick that down so I'll just fold that right over and stick that down so then we've got a nice little bit of reinforcement on the back there and then I'm going to bring in some some paper so I've got something to to lean on whilst I that's a bit thicker than a quarter of an inch it's a partial packet um, let me get some of my paper share yeah, that's better so I'm just going to do a little blob there to fold that up and then this should go up and it should sort of join join together like so so you've got a neat little a neat little meeting there and that's the pocket and that's all there is to it uh, you could um, if you wanted to do a little notch at the back so let's see that's just getting one of my shares so that's a whole one of me paper shares there so I've got of the different designs so you've got six different designs there and I've got just one square of each so that can go in there and I can easily pick it out and that is what I did so I'm going to carry on and make the rest of them and then I shall put them in my box so I've made those and when I was putting it together I realized that um, I had the equivalent of a whole pack here, uh, 48 sheets, and so this one is made at three eighths of an inch there, um, so that is the, the right size for holding an entire pack, and then the half pack is in the quarter of an inch one, and then the um, little ones that I've got are in the eighth of an inch. For some reason that just doesn't want to go in or it won't go so that's my half a pack there quite nicely is half a pack there I should put that in the other one and um, and then my other paper stashes are here in the little quarter of an inch ones so that's all ready for the box i've also done it so that i'm going to put labels down there so that when i'm flicking through it i can see what the paper pack is and what the colors are because i never remember and i might pick something out at random so like on this uh, fruity one i might sit there and think oh which yellow is that because they're all quite similar um, so it's be helpful to have it written down um, what, what it is for these papers I prefer the sides they ain't got fruit on 
I do like the size that I ain't got the fruit on, but I'm not really enamoured by the fruit. So that's why there's two sides of the paper. Okay, so I'll show you how I did the box. Okay, so to make the box, I'm using extra thick Whisper White. Oh, you notice I've got a stamping school now. Um, I uh, treated myself, well, it was free. Um, so um, yeah, it's a no brainer really. Um, and it is actually loads and loads better. And I'm not just saying that, I was willing for it to be as good as, or maybe not as good as my other one, but it is actually so much better. So eight and a quarter, uh, so A4 wide and nine and a quarter long. And on the long side, we're gonna score at two inches. And was going to score at eight and a quarter and then we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees and we are going to score at two and we're going to do exactly the same to the other one. Oh, I knocked you then sorry if you got a bit seasick okay so two and eight and a quarter and then just rotate and go to two and that's it that's the scoring done no slippage i always slip half the time with my other one so that's one of the reasons why i like it and then we are just going to fold and burnish these score lines now there is um we mentioned in the intro um that um the boss crafty caroline um, over at Crafty Caroline Creates, um, she made one very similar. Um, I've ju I'm, I'm just doing it differently. When I was making it, um, okay. um, I had the idea, remember that she'd done it, did my own, watched hers. Mine's a bit different. Um, and mine's different as well because I've I've done the the page segments, um, but you know great minds. She's the boss. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. Right, so you're going to join that flap's going to get joined to that one, and that one's going to get joined to that one. So when we come to do the cutting, and this is where I this is where I differ, and this is what worked for me um, differently um, because. I don't trust myself with a pair of scissors to cut a straight line. So, take this long piece um, that's got the two inch score line that way. You're going to put this score line at three. So, there it is at three inches, and you're going to cut just to that um, score line. And that's it. Cut. Then we fold that back, and we are going to match up the end here. Oh, you can't see them off camera. So we're going to match up on here the end of that school line there. Oh, do you know? I'll turn this way. The end of that school line there with the groove and the point at that end with that groove. So we're going to cut a diagonal straight line up there. I'm actually going to fold it the other way. How did I do it in practice? I did do it that way. Numpty. So lining those two up at the bottom and at the top. And then I'm just going to cut all the way along there and that's how I get a beautiful straight line because if I did it Caroline's way oh, I'd not get a straight line and then this wants to be the opposite so we want to make sure that we're cutting across on this one so turn it around that way and put that score line at three Cut across to that score line and then, like we did before, we're lining that edge up with that edge 
and there. Can you see? I think you can just about see. I will. I have done a nice diagram. So over on the blog, you'll be able to look at the diagram. Oh, I'll fluff that one. That's because I took my eye off the ball. Because I started looking in, in my lens and not, um, not actually what, what I was doing. So that is what we end up with. So we get a nice, clean, beautifully matching diagonals. Whereas if I'd have cut that myself, we'd have had two dog's eye legs, quite frankly. So that's why I did that. Okay, I have drawn drawn it out. We're now going to do some notching and um, you will be able to see that on the blog, nigeza.co.uk. Okay, so now we're going to do some snipping. So we want to take the little rectangles off here so we're going to cut straight up and we'll cut that one off and notch and we'll notch ever so slightly on this side as well just to give it a neater edge and then we're going to cut up here and we're going to notch these slightly as well so it will go together very nicely. So you should have one that looks like that. And then your other one, you're going to take this rectangle off. You're going to notch slightly there. And then we're going to notch slightly there, which is why I wasn't too worried about a little bit of a fluff there. I might just trim that ever so slightly. There. And then cut up here and then do our little notching again on this flap. And there we have it. So you will end up with two bits not quite matching. So you want one bit like that. So the two inch bit is the shorter bit there. And then in the opposite direction, you've got the two inch bit is the longer bit and the shorter bit is the bit that goes down. Because they are a left and a right. First time I made it, but he didn't do that as you can imagine. Okay, so we're going to stick these together there. So I am going to use Tombow, so I've got a little bit of wiggle rim because I'll get it wrong otherwise. So I want to measure the score lines at the bottom to meet up. Oh, there you see, I moved it. Like so. And then that should fold over nicely so that we can glue that down. Yep, that'll be right. So I'm going to apply some Tombow along here. And fold that over. We'll have a nice a nice box. And then we're gonna fold in the edges. I'm gonna put a bit of glue on these flaps. Hold one side down. Just put my fingers in there. Stick that down. 
And then I'm going to put some glue along that one. Fold that over. And that is my file box ready for my papers. But what I want to do is decorate this so that it matches my my ribbon storage and uh, this is probably one of my favorite papers and colors um, so I'm going to do it to match that so I shall tell you the measurements we need for that right so to decorate you need two pieces I'm using fresh fig that are um, six by six to go on each of the sides and then that's going to mat with some DSP and I'm using the flesh brawls again. I've chosen the different design to the one on the, the ribbon just to just so it matches but don't quite match. You get what I mean? And that's going to be five and three quarters by five and three quarters so that it mats with a quarter of an inch all the way around. And that's going to stick on there. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut it in a sec. And then for the front end we need a um, piece of cardstock that is two and three quarters by one and three quarters and then the DSP is two and a half by one and a half. I will put this all on my blog. And then the back piece is uh, six and three quarters by one and a half and then the DSP is two and a half by one and a half. Now the way that we get this to mat with a quarter of an inch all the way around so that it will then stick on the side with a quarter of an inch all the way around is my clever bit of science. But it's not really, it's just, it's just not that hard to work out really. Okay, so what I did was I looked at this, that's three inches. So I quite simply went to two and three quarters and I took my little score tool and I just made a slight mark just so I could see it. And then I lined that mark up with the track here and I lined the point up with the track at the other end. So I've got a line all the way across there. Okay bit like what I did when I was cutting the box. So that little notch there lined up there and that end is lined up there. And then I just cut a diagonal. I'm going to start the cutting from that end because I think that is starting at a point do not quite work quite so well. go and then for the DSP now this is where I've got to make sure we've got the right side because there is a, a left and a right so that one's going to go like that so this one's going like that so the DSP not really an upside down or down the wrong way I want it to cut from that end to that end. So I'm going to put it this way around. Okay, so that is two and a half because we want it a quarter of an inch smaller. So again, a little notch, a little mark that I can just about see there. Put that at that line there, that one at that line there. nice little and then that fits on there and that's all there is to it for getting that lined up nicely so then I'm just going to take some Tombow so that I've got the wigglage and I'm just going to put a little bit 
around the edges and the middle. Line it up so that we've got a nice border. And then glue it on my box. And this will then give your box a little bit of extra strength. I mean, it's made out of extra thick, so it'll be pretty good anyway. But um, the fact that I want it to last, that's why I wanted to give it some extra strength. That goes like that. Stick my hand in there. So I'm going to go around and finish those and get back to you. So there's the box all decorated um, and then all I need to do is slot in my paper and that holds it really nicely, really neatly and then on my desk, my workstation area, it, can, it will look nice with my ribbon holder. And I am in the process of getting a new craft room, or at least creating more space in my current one, as my son is moving out. And I don't no longer have to have a bed in here. It doesn't have to be a spare room. It's just going to be my crafting area. So um, I'm looking forward to when everything is going to look really pretty and neat and tidy. Okay, all the details will be over on my blog, nigeza.co.uk. I'm still getting used to saying that. Okay, see you again soon. Bye-bye.